What's up guys, I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's project, we're gonna stumble through making a brick styled end grain cutting board. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're in the shop. I'm really excited about this one. Fancy cutting boards are fun. So I have a bunch of walnut, bunch of maple. We're just gonna be doing a bunch of breaking down materials. So cross cutting, ripping to size, some resawing of the maple, jointing, planing, the whole deal. So we're just gonna get right into it. All right, day two, the glue ups that you just saw have set up overnight. I've got them popped out of the clamps. You can see behind me, they're nice and flat. Uh, we are going to now pass them through the thickness planer, get them ready for cutting down into strips and doing the end grain glue up of this portion. Once I do the planing, I'm just gonna take a moment and explain the design of these boards just in case um, you aren't familiar with how they kind of come together overall. Uh, but for now, we're gonna head over to the planer, do that, and then we'll get to the explanation later. All right, so we just finished planing everything up and I just squared up an edge using the um, table saw sled over at the table saw. And what that's gonna do is then allow us to rip these pieces into strips. So at this point, it's kind of subjective how thick you wanna make your cutting board um, and also the amount of usable material you have. I have about 24 inches for each of the walnut sections and then about 27 inches for the maple sections. So I think I'm gonna rip mine between an inch and three quarters and an inch and a half and that should give me plenty to make two of these cutting boards that are basically the exact same size. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so now that all of the components have been planed and ripped to the same thickness, let's just quickly talk about how the design of this thing works. Most cutting boards that have a cool intricate pattern is actually just the result of flipping pieces over and combining different types of wood. That's exactly what this uh, type of cutting board is. So I'm gonna take the walnut pieces that we cut to length and I'm just gonna lay them out on the board here as such. Now that all the pieces are laid out, what I'm gonna do is just flip every other piece. So the reason that this design works so well is because when we originally built these, they had a bunch of two inch pieces of walnut with then an end piece that was half that length. So by flipping them over and then combining them together, it gives this offset brick pattern. Then what we're gonna do is take the maple strips that we had and we're gonna insert one in between each of them and it's gonna fill the same uh, void that these maple pieces are and make it look like mortar with bricks. All right, frustrations in the shop. So something I recognized when I was doing the glue up on this, but it's easier to show now now that these, uh, these boards are out of the clamps is that apparently my planer is, uh, the blades themselves are really worn down because what's happening is it's planing to a different thickness in like the middle eight inches and then the outer like two inches on each side. 
uh, which don't see as much use, are planing down to a different thickness. So it is making all of my pieces pretty much like this convex shape. So specifically with these really thin strips of maple for the wide ones, it's causing a problem with the glue ups. I'll do a close up of it, but just let it be a lesson in tool maintenance. Um, make sure your planer, specifically all your tools, have sharp blades on them, um, are kind of in tune as much as possible because it causes problems like this. It's not a huge deal. It means I'm gonna have to cut off about an inch on each side of these boards, which is frustrating. It's a waste of wood, it's a waste of time. It's not gonna be exactly how I want it to, but whatever, learn from my mistakes. Keep your tools tuned up. Let's keep going. All right, it has been a minute since I touched this project. Basically, what, from what you saw, I ended up messing it up so bad on my first go around that it wasn't salvageable. Just the final product was gonna be too small. It wasn't gonna be a good looking cutting board. And it was one of those things where it just made sense to pause, figure out all the things I did wrong and start over. So in the interim, I actually acquired a ton of this really nice, I think it's Brazilian cherry wood, like a really nice tropical hardwood. It's red in color, so it's perfect for these brick style cutting boards. So what you're gonna see next is just a series of me doing pretty much the exact same steps that I did before to get to a much nicer project. A Couple of things that I did different that you'll see. One is I borrowed my uh, buddy's 20 inch helical head planer, which made a huge difference in obviously being properly calibrated and cutting down that hardwood. My 13 inch lunchbox planer could barely handle it because of how dense the wood was. I understand not everybody has access to that kind of a tool, but I did plan this second go around knowing I would have access to it. The other thing I did, which you'll see, is I just made a couple of really nice calls knowing that because this wood is so dense and I don't have a drum sander and I was gonna have to be doing all this sanding by hand, uh, I really wanted to do my darndest to make sure that the glue ups were as flat as possible. So that made a huge difference in just taking my time and doing that because the sanding process, although it was difficult and you'll see me doing it with the belt sander, it did go a lot quicker had I not done that. And then you'll just see me going through the finishing process. So that's sanding everything down to 220. I then wet the cutting boards, which I don't actually show you doing, but you do that so that when you actually go to use this for the first time and it gets wet, the wood grain doesn't raise up and it becomes rough and, I don't know, kind of unusable. Um, I go through the routing process to give it a chamfer profile, routing in some handles underneath it, putting on a butcher block finish, and then just adding some rubber feet to it and we're gonna call it quits. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this was a good representation of a project that you start off with a vision, it goes completely wrong, and then realizing that it's okay to start over and learn from those mistakes. I'm really happy with how both of these boards came out. I think they're beautiful. I'm a little bit upset that I actually have to give them away to somebody, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing me mess up and solve my problems, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time on whatever it is I'm building. Bye.